data classification. What is it and why it's important? Let's find out about this and more, such as what are the levels of classification used by the US government and should your organization follow them. If you're new to this channel, please don't forget to subscribe. Videos are added each week on data management and data governance topics to help you become a more knowledgeable data professional. Today's topic addresses data classification and its importance. So what is data classification? Well, data classification is the process of organizing structured and unstructured data into mutually exclusive categories based on type, contents, and other metadata. One other thing to mention is that these exclusive categories or classes are usually part of a class hierarchy. Most often, data gets classified based on its sensitivity level. He's pretty sensitive, right? Sensitive to the force, that is. Then based on different characteristics, such as the type of data and its contents, we classify the data into different classes or groups or buckets or levels. By the way, I prefer levels or levels of classification because that implies that hierarchy that I mentioned. The most common levels of classification that data get put into are confidential, sensitive, or public, or more commonly referred to as high risk, medium risk, and low risk or no risk. The high risk data requires stringent access controls and protections both because it's often protected by regulations such as GDPR, CCPA, HIPAA, so forth and so on, and because it could cause significant harm to an individual or the organization if breached. Medium risk represents data that's intended for internal use only, but the impact of a data breach is not catastrophic. Examples? Examples. Non-identifiable employee data or a strategy document, or a financial statement even. Low-risk data is public information that doesn't require any access restrictions. Examples include information that you find on public web pages, job postings, and even business contact information. You can find out more about these three data classification groups and their characteristics in this video right here. For example, the US government has seven restricted data slash formally restricted data, code word classification, top secret, secret, confidential, public trust, and controlled unclassified information. Strange names for some of these levels of classification, right? So let me tell you a little bit about some of them as I know you're a bit curious what they are all about. Restricted data concerns nuclear information alone, as nuclear information is not automatically declassified after 25 years. Code word classifications contain top secret information that also require a specific code word clearance administered by the CIA. Top secret contains information that if disclosed unauthorized, it would cause grave damage to the national security. Hey, what do you think? Is data and information on UFO sightings considered top secret? Fun fact. It's believed that 1.4 million Americans have top secret clearance. Is that a lot more than you expected? Please let me know in the comments below. Anyways, as we go down the list, things become less restrictive and have a lesser chance of causing some damage if disclosed. I think you get the idea. So that's what data classification is. What you should remember though is that hierarchy factor. So if your data is classified at a high risk, then it will not also be flagged as medium risk or low risk. Let's take an example. Let's say that we have this marketing material which is public information, so it's low risk or no risk even. But as soon as we are adding my birth date, it makes it a high risk confidential information. By the way, that is not my birth date. So the marketing material example was an example of classifying unstructured data. But the same really applies to structured data. So we can classify data at the column level. But if one of the column contains that high risk confidential information, 
the entire table gets flagged as such, as well as the entire database. Thank you to the sponsor of this video, Aparavi, helping organizations find and unlock the value of data no matter where it lives. Do more with less with Aparavi. We have a whole new approach to finding data, automating classification, optimizing, conducting legal discovery, and automating data governance and compliance. Our cloud-based platform is the data intelligence and automation platform. Before we see the main four reasons why data classification is important, let's do a quick recap. In a nutshell, data classification tags data most often according to its sensitivity level into mutually exclusive levels such as high, medium, or low risk. Though you may use different nomenclature for these levels or categories, and you may have more than three depending on your use cases. So why is data classification important? I think we're already on the same page that data classification is important for privacy reasons. But there's a little bit more than that. According to this Gartner Market Guide, there are four main use cases for data classification. Risk mitigation, governance compliance, efficiency and optimization, and lastly, analytics. Let's start with risk mitigation. If we know which data is high risk, medium or low, we adopt the least privilege principle and ensure that only authorized employees have access to it. This way, we could limit access to personally identifiable information and intellectual property. We can also reduce the data loss and unauthorized disclosure of data by ensuring it is stored in a dedicated, secure location, which at the same time reduces the attack surface area to sensitive data. Governance slash compliance. Identifying data governed by GDPR, CCPA, HIPAA, PCI, and other current as well as future regulations is one of the main benefits of data classification. And to be honest, one of the main drivers too. Because if you don't manage that data according to these regulations, you can be in big trouble. I'm talking about big fines and reputational damage. This way, we can better facilitate data subject access requests or freedom of information access requests, and the right to be forgotten, among many other things. Because in the end, the right parties can now know what information is stored in the environment and where it could be retrieved from if needed. Efficiency and optimization. We can enable efficient access to content based on type, usage, etc. So to build on the above point on governance and compliance, it would enable us to pass compliance audits quicker and cheaper by making it easier to identify the data governed by these regulations. We can also discover and eliminate stale or redundant data as well as dark data. Hey, check out this video on what dark data is if you're curious to find out more about this topic. Lastly, analytics. It can help the organization optimize different business activities by having this data tagged. And it also informs the organization on the usage and location of data. This is what data classification is and why it's important. But please check out the next video as it will address the difference between data classification and data categorization. Until then, please like the video if you've enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe as there are at least one new video added each week. Thank you.